Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And today we're going to talk about Damien Leone's Terrifier 3, the third entry in the Terrifier franchise. That's right, my friends. Art the Clown is back. He's meaner, he's gorier, and he's also funnier, in my opinion. I think this might be the funniest entry in the franchise so far. Hey. And I don't know if it's just because it took three movies for me to fully get on Art the Clown's wavelength click with his sense of humor I, I think it could be because like in the first one I was not that impressed yeah I, you know, second one I was like I really liked and this one I really loved like I rewatched all three recently well I rewatched two of them and then finally watched the third one and the first one actually is really funny but like most of the humor isn't necessarily art the clown like a lot of the dialogue exchanges are right funny. right and the second one art the clown is funnier the stuff inside the Halloween the shop Halloween shop yeah yeah. <laughs> Where he's like got like the googly eyes on. That stuff's pretty funny. And just something about this one, it felt like you get the gory horror scene, but you'd also get like a Halloween shop like scene one right after another the entire time in this movie. Yeah. So like everything was both gory and funny. And so it felt like a really nice balance. Yeah. Also, uh, the homage to Christmas horror movies. 100%. 100%. It even opens up with what feels like a homage to the trailer for Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yeah. Night which was a nice little nod to a past slasher movie, which once got a whole lot of crap thrown at it for daring to do a trailer for a slasher movie where Santa Claus kills people. Yeah. They go even further with that in this movie in a really awesome introduction to the movie that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the rest of the movie, but is a welcome addition nonetheless. Yeah. It's a prologue, but it's not anything that informs you of, of the plot. No. It's more like its own little isolated short film that opens the movie. Yeah. It, it mainly like asks the question of like, wait, does Art the Clown kill kids? Yes, which is a good question. And the answer is, he does. Yeah. But most of him killing the kids isn't really on screen. You get some aftermath of it, but you don't really see him hack up a kid the way you saw him hack up that one girl in part two. Yeah. It's very clear that the movie established where the line is for these movies. Yeah, yeah. On how we'll, far we'll, they'll we'll, go. We'll kill a kid, but we're not going to like do like yeah. the massive gore scene with it. And now that I've told you that, you have been warned. So yes, Art the Clown does kill kids in this, but I did give you an idea of what it's like in the movie. So you you can judge for yourself whether or not you can handle that particular bit of goriness. The story proper in this movie takes place five years after the events of Terrifier 2. Sienna has finally gotten out of the asylum she's basically been in since then because she's been dealing with the PTSD and the trauma and the hallucinations she's been experiencing ever since yeah. Art attacked her in the second movie. Art the Clown has returned and it is now up to her to save her brother, save her aunt, save her cousin from the terrifying terror that is Art the Clown. But Art the Clown is not alone this time. Now, technically he wasn't alone in the second one, but the entity that followed him around, the little girl in the second one, she didn't really do much except for copying people's voices in that, yeah. in that movie. In this movie, she possesses the body of the final girl from the first movie, Victoria, and takes over her body and basically becomes Art the Clown's like Harley Quinn throughout this film. Yeah. I will not be surprised if it becomes a couple's cosplay on Halloween oh, no, not in all. years to not come and horror conventions. It is the same actress who played uh, Victoria in the first one, and she has a blast playing yeah. this version of Victoria. <laughs> Which actually leads me to the other thing I really love about this movie. This movie finally makes all of the background lore of the first two movies actual story points in this movie. Yeah. They actually go into what Art the Clown is. They go into what the little girl is. They go into what was going on with uh, Sienna's father and the weird drawings he was drawing that seemed to predict the future. They actually go into all of that in this movie. They don't just leave it in the background for you as the audience member to figure out. And I appreciated that. Magic and demons are real. Yeah, yeah. This movie also has a lot of uh, horror icon cameos. Tom Savini's in this. Yep, he has a cameo as a guy on a news screen. Yeah. Daniel Roebuck, who, if nothing else, you remember him from like a lot of Rob Zombie shit. Yes, 
Yes, he was Grandpa Munster in the yeah. Munsters. Ice Cream Man. Um, Clint Howard. Clint Howard, yes. Yeah. Clint Howard also appears in this. The Clint Howard, Daniel Roebuck scene is probably my favorite little vignette in the whole movie. Yeah. It's super entertaining seeing those two character actors interact with Art the Clown. Clint Howard does in fact say like, hey, I like ice cream. Yes. You know, like and her dad was actually played by the dude who played Michael yes. in The Lost Boys. Yes. Jason Patrick or something like that. Yeah. Whereas the first two movies, a lot of like the background Easter eggs was like lore stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, is Art the Clown a demon? Is he not? Yada, yada, yada. This movie, a lot of the background Easter eggs are like horror movie references. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, hey, this is the guy who played Ice Cream Man. Hey, here's Tom Savini who made Maniac or at least who did the effects for Maniac. Yeah. We're going to reference the trailer for Silent Night, Deadly Night. I love that. As a horror geek, I was just sitting yeah. there going like, okay, now the background Easter eggs. And this movie is finally speaking my language. Chris Jericho also <laughs> returns in a cameo that if you saw the second movie, he was also in the end stinger of that movie. He returns as that character in this. And you could tell he had like written into his contract that he has to get an awesome death. Yeah. If he's going to appear in the movie because they definitely give him a pretty awesome death. The other thing I noticed about this movie is the body count is definitely increased. Mm -hmm. There is way more dead people in this movie. And the other thing I noticed about this movie is there's way more guys mutilated in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Than the definitely. past two movies. The chainsaw rape scene. Oh, yeah, which, again, was a reference to Pieces. Is, yeah. They recreate a kill from Pieces, but do it Art the Clown's way. Yes. Which is way gorier and more fucked up. I also like this movie's little snarky commentary on, like, people who are obsessed with true crime. Yes. Um, <laughs> which Jack is a bit obsessed yeah, with true yeah. crime. Yeah, I, I like I like true crime. <laughs> but yeah. I like that the movie kind of points out how fucked up it is and how exploitative people can be to real victims oh, in yeah. like, the true crime space. Yeah, definitely. And so, like, seeing, like, a character who's obsessed with true crime get the Art the Clown treatment is, is pretty cathartic, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think I'm spoiling anything by indicating what characters die. You can pretty much assume if they're not Sienna, everyone's dead in this movie. <laughs> Art the Clown is merciless, and he's not alone this time. There's another clown running around with him in the form of Victoria, who is also killing people, so. I appreciated the fact that they didn't go back on the Victoria birthing Art the Clown's head. Oh, yeah. That you know? is one thing they didn't explain, but I don't care. Yeah, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I don't think the birth part was necessary, but maybe it's part of the whole possessing of Victoria, whatever. Necessary? Nothing about this movie is necessary. Good point, good point. You know? <laughs> to be fair, there's been plenty of movies where I've complained they've explained too much, so maybe I should appreciate the yeah, fact no, no. that Terrifier doesn't always explain itself. <laughs> yeah, it's like, nope, he's just reborn. He gives birth to his head. He's still got the umbilical cord yep. like coming out, and his head's like... <laughs> I do not think I am exaggerating when I say this is probably the goriest slasher movie ever made. The way I put it in terms of like graphic violence yeah. and, and, and gore, and torture. Serbian film is at the top. Number two is probably Terrifier 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Well, the thing about it is that, like, Serbian film's almost like a different animal, right? Probably a better comparison, as far as, like, the gore is concerned, is Ichi Killer. Oh, Ichi the Killer. That's a yeah, good comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about... I actually say Terrifier 3, I think, actually goes a little bit farther. I totally agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I also want to point out that those two movies, Ichi the Killer and a Serbian film, aren't slasher films. That's true. They're, they're horror films. They're horror films. 100%. Films. I was talking about the goriest slasher film. Oh, if we're talking like, about, like, straight up slasher. Like, we're putting this up against, like, Hatchet. This has more gore than the super gory, low-rent, straight-to-video, shot-on-shittio movies that were just pure gore fest. Yeah. But it has the quality of an actually well done good horror movie. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like the acting's great, the writing's great. I love the expansion of the story. Very much a Empire Strikes Back entry in the franchise. Yeah. The second movie was super triumphant by the end, and you really felt like Sienna earned that victory yeah. at the end of the movie. In this movie, this is Art the Clown's revenge. So be prepared for that. It's very clear they're setting up a Terrifier 4 by the end of it. We'll go into that into the spoiler section, because believe you me, there's some shit that happens in the last act of this movie that you won't want 
not spoiled here if you haven't yeah. seen the movie yet. So uh, with that said, I highly recommend Terrifier 3 if you're a fan of the other two Terrifier movies. If you're not a fan of the Terrifier movies, I probably would not start here. I would start with Terrifier 2. If you like Terrifier 2, go back and watch Terrifier 1, then check out Terrifier 3. Because Terrifier 2, I feel like, is the best entry into this series. Yeah, this is not a good jumping on movie. If you like Terrifier 2, if you can handle Terrifier 2, you'll be able to handle this one and the first one. The first one is so rough around the edges, I feel like it turns a whole lot of people off. In fact, it turned me off the first time I watched it. It's not the greatest entry into the franchise. I think Terrifier 2 is. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, Terrifier 3 is currently available in theaters. It will eventually be on Screenbox because it is a bloody disgusting film and they own Screenbox, so it's gonna have first dibs of the movie when it goes to streaming, but I'm pretty sure it will eventually get a home video release and will most likely be on like the Amazons and stuff like that to rent at some point. And with that said, let us move on to the spoilers so we can talk about what exactly Art the Clown does to Sienna in this really fucked up and hilarious entry. <laughs> I love the fact that the five-year gap is literally just Art the Clown sitting in a rocking chair and, like, freezing there. Yep, yep. <laughs> If you saw the second movie, you probably surmise that Art the Clown is some sort of demon and that Sienna is some sort of angelic entity of some kind. This movie confirms all of that stuff yeah. and goes right into it. And yes, her dad did have visions of what was going to happen to her and basically prepared her for that with the way he raised her. Essentially, her dad is the vessel from which... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, what do you call it? Like a prophet almost? Yeah, he's the prophet. <laughs> he's getting yeah. visions from heaven. The comic book prophet. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So Art the Clown was originally a person who killed a whole bunch of people in a clown costume, then got possessed by a demon, and is now the Art the Clown we know in these movies. Sienna seeing the forging of the sword. Oh yeah, oh yeah. By a demon in hell who's held on a leash by the Virgin Mary. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And when we say the Virgin Mary, we mean this is like, it's like a statue you would see in a normal nativity scene, but it's moving like something out of Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> It's a pretty cool and awesome image. And even though the sword is angelic, it was also forged of hell. Yeah, given the fact forged that it's, in hell. It's like a know? demon's fucking like blacksmithing it. We do not know necessarily how the dad got a hold of it or how it eventually ended up in Sienna's hands, but we do get a little bit more confirmation on the sword's origin there. Yeah. They introduce her, her aunt and uncle. And uh, yes, they are fucking mutilated yeah. by the end of this movie. Ooh. Brutally. She also has like a little cousin. Yes. A little cousin named Gabby. What I really liked about the construction of this movie, in the opening scene when he chops up this one kid in his room, we hear it from the other room when the little girl, his sister, is listening. We see it later when the mom runs into the room and sees the body parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> but everyone else, like, you're actually watching every everything happen. But because the movie established between that scene and the scene at the mall that Art the Clown will kill a kid, it means for the entirety of the third act, you know know she's in danger. You know the movie's willing to go there. You're like, no, nah, th this kid could get killed any minute. Exactly. You know? And since we're in the spoiler section, I will tell you, Gabby gets sucked into hell. Yeah. This movie ends with Sienna essentially losing the fight. Everyone she knows is fucking killed and dead by the end of this movie, including her brother. But because her brother is killed off screen, I'm not entirely convinced he's dead. Right. And since the fourth movie is obviously going to go into hell. Yeah. You know, he might, even if he is dead, he might still show he up. He might still show up, but I'm not convinced he's dead because the last time we saw him, he was on his way to go see her. And then we see like a skull with his glasses on it, but we don't know for sure if that's actually his skull. Yeah. It's Art the Clown. He fucks with people and he fucks with people even more in this one when he's got like a demon running around with him that can actually talk to people and taunt yeah. them. His own little personal Harley Quinn. So uh, Gabby is sucked into hell. Her aunt and her uncle are fucking mutilated. They even do that scene from the book version of uh, American Psycho. Puts a tube down her aunt's fucking throat and then puts a bunch of rats in there and then cuts open her throat so the rats pour out. It's in a movie of fucked up things so it says a lot that it stands out. The uncle we know for sure is dead because we see his actual mutilated body oh, there. Oh yeah. It's definitely his body. Yeah. They and make a Christmas angel out of that guy. 100%. Art the Clown is set up as being alone again at the end of this movie. Yeah. Because she does 
kill the possessed Victoria with the angel sword. So we can assume that demon's actually gone, but you know, we're dealing with hell shit. Right. Like, yes. Little girl yeah. might show up again. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of funny just like watching Art the Clown get on a bus, <laughs> just like a person yeah. like, coming back from a movie or a party, you know, like it's just. Well, that's one of the things that I think is part of Art the Clown's appeal. It's not as apparent in the first movie because if you don't know he's a demon, the first movie he just comes across as a person until he shoots himself in the head and then gets back up. Yeah. It even shows us at the beginning of that movie him putting makeup on. Right. Like a human. So Art the Clown's constantly doing things like, like a human would that you normally wouldn't see a slasher do. Yeah. You normally wouldn't see a slasher board a bus to get from point A to point B. Yeah. Usually if they're going on the bus, it's to specifically kill a specific person. <laughs> it's like like that awesome scene in the second one where he goes to the dry cleaner, not the yeah. dry cleaners, he goes yeah. to the laundry mat and he goes to the laundry mat and he does kill someone while he's there. But like the whole reason why he's there is to get the blood off his clothes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just, he's literally just there to do his laundry, <laughs> you know? But like all these people die just because they happen to be there. Yep, you know? yep. <laughs> But that's the interesting dynamic of Art the Clown. He does some of the most human fucking things, but he is, at the end of the day, a demon. Yeah, he is, at the end of the day, inhuman, you know? And he's also a mime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite scene is the uh, anal chainsaw. Oh yeah, the channel saw scene. The chainsaw scene when her, when Sienna's little brother, his uh, college roommate is having sex with his true crime obsessed girlfriend in the dorm showers. Yeah, Art the Clown comes in in a very clear homage to pieces with a chainsaw and chainsaws the fuck out of them. Yeah. It also has one of my other favorite moments in the movie because there's that whole scene where the true crime girl, after like trying to question the brother and trying to question the sister because on some level she wants to fuck Art, Art the, the clown. clown. Yeah. <laughs> She's sexually aroused yeah. by Art. She basically represents all the fucking Art the Clown girlies on yes. fucking social yes. media. And she has that line about like, what's it like to look into his eyes? Does he have a soul? Oh, well, yeah. So after he fucking mutilates her, he just takes off these like Christmas glasses he's wearing and just kind of stares her in the eye while she's slowly dying, unable to open her eyes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the next movie is going to involve Sienna having to go into hell in order to get her cousin back. I'm kind of expecting Hellraiser 2, but with extra gore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. That's kind of like what I have in my head. They're probably going to do for the next one. <laughs> and with that said, my fellow gorehounds, where can we find you, Count Jackie? Oh, you can find me here on YouTube where I stream pretty much uh, every weekday if I can, starting at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. How about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Spired Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you want to help out either of us, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way, but we will certainly accept more. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, if you made it this far into the video, then I want you to comment below, and be sure to comment below using the hashtag Christmas Clown Massacre. Use the hashtag Christmas Clown Massacre, that way I know. That way Jack knows. That way the whole world knows that you are about to get mutilated by Art the Clown. Good luck, bro. Yeah, good luck with that. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and we'll catch y'all later. <laughs>